I've been helping patients improve their kidney function for more than 10 years now. In order to achieve this result, my main focus is the renal diet, which is key to improve. You see, in a recent study, 120 CKD stage 3 and 4 patients were able to reverse the decline of their GFR just by improving their diet. Incredible, isn't it? What's most interesting about this study is that all the participants of the intervention group improved and they were able to achieve this result with a very easy to follow diet. Now, one of the most important parts of this study is the way protein intake was managed. I can tell that the way they did that was key to the incredible result they achieved because when we talk about the diet that protects the kidneys, we mainly talk about protein. You see, there are only three macronutrients, the most important parts of the diet, and they are carbohydrate, fat, and protein. And well, fat and carbs are pretty easy to get, right? How? You just need to avoid high glycemic foods, limit saturated fats, and eat everything else in moderation. And I know that this is easier said than done, but protein is a lot harder to manage. So, how do we manage protein in a renal diet? If we take a look at what the current guideline recommends, we will see it won't just give you an overall recommendation for protein like you will get from carbon fat. No, it will tell you to eat exactly 0.55 to 0.60 grams per kilograms of protein per ideal body weight per day if you don't have diabetes and exactly 0.6 to 0.8 grams per kilograms of protein per ideal body weight per day if you have diabetes. So for example, a male with diabetes weighing 180 pounds will need to eat a little bit less of 60 grams of protein per day. That's the equivalent of the protein you will get from around 3 cups of white beans, which is a lot of beans by the way. And while I obviously don't recommend eating so many beans per day, it was just an example to show that it's not like you should not eat protein at all, alright? Also, because all foods contain a little bit of protein that you should be accounting for. Grains, nuts, seeds, even greens contain protein. So my point here is that you need to know exactly how much protein you need every day and that it is very important to follow this recommendation. As I've started a million times here on the channel, getting the right amount of protein every day is key to stop the decline or improve your GFR numbers. This is a rule, it's not up for debate if you want to save your kidneys. Now you may ask, but limiting protein always makes me feel sick, why should I follow this rule? Because if you follow me here regularly, you probably already know that following a low or very low protein diet is basically mandatory for anyone wanting to improve their GFR and to lower their creatinine levels, including people with diabetes. And this became the rule after thousands of kidney disease patients we were able to avoid or significantly delay dialysis just thanks to a diet that's low on protein. This is why you should find out with the help of your nephrologist how much protein you need every day and you should follow this prescription strictly. You can't eat too much nor too little protein. Both situations will be very bad for you. Now guys, having a set amount of daily protein also implies that you need to eat a little bit of high quality protein sources every day. What you actually want are foods that are low on phosphorus because phosphorus from animal-based foods is very hard on the kidneys and of high on biological value. So the big question is, what are the best high quality protein sources for a renal diet? So our very first entry will come as a bit of a surprise because I usually recommend to avoid animal-based foods. But hey, I don't do that because I'm a vegan or something like that. I only care about your health. Right. So a great protein source, high biological value, very low on phosphorus is egg whites. It's not very usual to see egg whites recommended for people with CKD. So as usual, consult your doctor if you want to add them to your diet. And also keep in mind that they are very rich in protein. So you will need to be very moderate here. 
but egg whites actually are special in a way. Yes, as we can see here, egg whites are very high in protein compared to the amount of calories you will get. Now, the other thing that makes us consider egg whites for a renal diet when all the other animal-based foods are banned is their phosphorus content. Egg whites are very, very low in phosphorus and this is way more important than most people realize. You see, in the study I was mentioning earlier, 120 CKD stage 3 and 4 patients were able to reverse the decline of their GFR. This is a very significant study and not just because it was published on a very prestigious peer-reviewed paper, not just because all the test subjects got an improvement on average. I mean, that's amazing, but there is more to it because you see, they were able to achieve an improvement in kidney function in non-diabetic patients without having to limit protein intake to below 0.75 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight which means that they were able to improve without the use of keto analogs. Keto analogs are an amino acid supplement that CKD patients are supposed to take when reducing protein to 0.60 grams per kilogram per day or less. Now, if these numbers confuse you, don't worry, I've made a full video to show you exactly how a diet with this kind of protein intake would look like. It's up here and also down in the description. Now, in the study in which 120 patients improved, they were not taking keto analogs, but they still got better. And the secret, in my opinion, was using just the right amount of protein that are low on phosphorus, but of high biological value. But what does high biological value mean and why is it important? When a protein contains essential amino acids in the right proportions required by humans, we say it has high biological value, okay? So it means it's a complete protein. This usually only happens in animal-based protein. On the other hand, plant-based protein usually has two low levels on one or more amino acids and it is low biological value. There is an exception to that, however, that we will see in a moment. Now keep in mind that low biological value doesn't mean unhealthy or bad for you. In fact, the human body is perfectly able to get all the amino acids it needs from different foods and to recombine them. This is why people with CKD can eat just plant-based protein and still be fine. But you see, there may be benefits from getting part of your protein from high biological value source. In fact, people with CKD are usually recommended to only eat plant-based protein. So the question is, are there sources of protein that are both high biological value and plant-based? Yes, actually one. Soybeans. Soybeans are commonly consumed in Asia in several different forms, including tofu. While they have many of the health benefits of other legumes, there is one reason why soybeans may be particularly great in a renal diet. They are one of the only plant-based sources of protein that is also of high biological value, which means they have all the essential amino acids in them as I was saying. And keep in mind that these legumes are very rich in protein, so moderation is key when adding beans and legumes to your diet. And they are also higher in phosphorus than egg whites, but phosphorus is not well absorbed from plant-based foods, which is a big plus. Now, the other advantage of soybeans and soy products over egg whites is the fact that they are plant-based. Plant-based protein do have more kidney protecting benefits than animal-based protein, says science and soybeans may come with even more benefits depending on how they are prepared. For example, you could eat natto. Natto is a Japanese delicacy, a dish made from fermented soybeans. It is one of the best sources of vitamin K2, an essential nutrient with powerful kidney protecting benefits. And many people believe that natto actually is the reason why Japanese people live longer and have fewer chronic diseases. Natto is the only source of natto kinase, an enzyme that lowers blood pressure and dissolves blood clots. And this is not all. Natto is also a probiotic food. Now, 
There are other protein sources you may consider in a renal diet that are not soybeans and egg whites. Whole grains, seeds, nuts are all great sources of plant-based protein that can be used to reach the needed amount of daily protein. But one of the best protein sources is legumes. Legumes are great because they have so many health benefits. They are high in resistant starch, a type of fiber that improves gut and kidney health. It protects from blood sugar spikes. Legumes are also high in antioxidants and iron. So consider having in your diet legumes such as chickpeas, black beans, and green beans. And if you want to learn more about the best legumes and their benefits, my video up here is for you. Now, there is also a very underrated protein source with a lot of health benefits that you don't hear about very often. This is spirulina. Now, spirulina is not just very low in phosphorus compared to the amount of protein you will get, which is key for kidney health as we have seen. It also comes with many health benefits. Spirulina is a type of blue-green algae that is rich in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Spirulina is one of the best plant sources of iron in existence. It's also incredibly high in calcium with over 26 times the calcium in milk. It also contains many of the vitamins someone with kidney problems needs the most including vitamin B1, B3, and B6, but also folic acid, vitamin C, vitamin D, and more. It's also one of the most powerful antioxidants on earth, four times more powerful than blueberries. Some studies are also showing that it can help lowering cholesterol levels and decrease the inflammation in the body. Now spirulina is also rich in tryptophan, which is great to help you sleep better. So consider trying it before sleep. Now you may ask, how do I know how much protein I should eat per day? As we have seen, protein is essential for your body. Getting the right amount of protein every day is crucial to manage CKD and to keep or improve your GFR level. It will be a serious mistake not knowing how much protein you are eating every day. So what should you do? Well, the best course of action is clearly knowing very well how much protein a day you are eating. And there are two ways to achieve this. First, you could have a dietitian preparing you a diet that you will have to follow. That's something I always recommend, by the way. And also, you can get informed. You can learn what foods contain protein and how much of it. You can then measure everything you eat and use an app to make sure you are in the right range for protein intake and other nutrients. I personally use these kind of apps every day because I want to track my macros for my diet. There are various free apps you can use. Nutritionix, MyFitnessPal, Chronometer, Lucid, and more. They all do a similar job. They all let you track with sufficient accuracy your macronutrients. Now, the one I actually use is Chronometer. The free version lets me do almost everything I need. The way these apps work, it's very easy. You can input any food you want as breakfast, lunch, dinner, and so on. And the app will tell you exactly how much protein, but also phosphorus, potassium, sodium, etc. you will be getting. Also, you can set daily goals for these nutrients, which is very useful. These apps are free and can be used on Android iPhone and even on a PC via web browser. And while they are not supposed to replace a renal nutritionist or a dietitian, they can definitely help you make your diet more varied and also help you make sure you are getting the right nutrients every day. And that's very useful because in many cases, a few grams of protein or carbs could make all the difference. And guys, if you want to learn more about the renal diet, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.